Okay, hello, my name is Mukun Tatai. I'm a scientist at the National Center for Biological Sciences in Bangalore. One of the most amazing scientific discoveries of recent times is we've identified thousands of planets orbiting other stars, stars other than the sun. And with so many, you know, billions of stars and planets orbiting each one of them, it's very likely that there's life somewhere else in the universe, even if we may never come into contact with it. So I want you to start thinking about what life will be like on other planets. Now, since we're probably never going to see it firsthand, the only way we can study this is to study life on Earth and wonder what parts of life on Earth might be universal. So I'm going to give you three words. Evolution, information, and cells. I think most people would believe that complex life cannot exist without some mechanism of Darwinian evolution, a mechanism of generating variation and selecting uh, based on function. So it's very likely that wherever you find life, it would have arose and diversified through a process of evolution. It's also extremely likely that wherever you find life, it will be based on information. It will be based on an idea that you code a recipe for something and that's different from the object itself. In the same way that on Earth, you have the code for uh, a cell or an organism in the DNA and then you have the organism itself which is built by following a recipe which is in that code. The third piece is cells. So it's an absolutely amazing fact discovered in the 1800s that all life on Earth is made up of cells. Whether it is single cell free living organisms like bacteria or paramecium or amoeba or us or blue whales or trees, we are like collections of cells. We're just groups of cells that like to cooperate with each other for a common goal. This was not at all obvious to biologists in the 1800s that things so different from a tree or a paramecium are actually made of the same kind of stuff. And this then is an open question. If you find life on other planets, will they be made of cells? Or will they be organized at a fundamental molecular level in a very different way? So I'm willing to make a bet that life, wherever you find it, will be made up of something very much like a cell. And the reason is because without something very much like a cell, evolution will not work. What the cell does is it separates the inside from the outside. And once you do that, if you have any clever innovation, then you are the beneficiary of that innovation and not your neighbor. And then you can have competition. So unless you have pi private and public, you can't have evolution. So unless you have something very much like a cell with a boundary and a sense of self and non-self, you can't have the evolution of complex life. So I bring it back to those three words. Wherever you find life in the universe, it's very likely to be built around evolution, information, and something very much like a cell. Now, what do I do? I'm interested in how life arose on Earth and became complex. Now, the origin of life is something which is a very difficult problem. Um, I study the question quite a bit further down. The origin of life is around three and a half billion years ago. I start my work looking at what happened around two billion years ago, when the Earth was covered with cells that look very much like bacteria. These are called prokaryotes. And at some point, you see in the fossil record the emergence of a new type of cell called a eukaryote, which is, for example, human cells, plant cells, paramecium, amoeba, they're all eukaryotes. And I'm interested in how that transition happened. So how do you ever discover something like this? So this is one amazing aspect of being a, a life scientist, as opposed to, say, a physicist or a chemist. Living things record information about their own history. So for example, by sequencing human genomes, you can discover that human species arose in Africa and you can discover how they colonized the earth. So in the same way, by looking at the genomes of cells, you can actually reconstruct how cells evolved and became more complicated. So that's what I do. We look at the genomes of existing cells and we try and reconstruct what cells looked like two billion years ago. And then we try and see how they evolved then and how they continue to evolve now. So I became a scientist by accident. Um, I never thought I would, I never planned to go through this whole route of becoming a scientist. Um, but now that I'm a scientist, I can tell you the best part of it absolutely is just meeting interesting people. You get to 
uh, you get to travel through the country, you get to travel to schools and colleges and universities, you get to travel all around the world to really beautiful places and meet the most interesting people who are really excited about what they do. And I just like talking to people about what they work on. And every time I do that, I get some idea about what I work on. So it's that sense of community, which is, I think, the best part.